Hi, I'm Dr. Almanfi. Uh, I'll be presenting today about percussionist transaxillary TAVR access step by step. These are my disclosures. Um, transfemoral TAVR is the standard of care. It's proven to be the most uh, uh, or the best outcome even compared to surgery or alternative access TAVR. Unfortunately, transfemoral TAVR is not always feasible, especially in certain patient population. Today, I'm gonna speak about percutaneous transaxillary access, um, which requires uh, very meticulous case planning. Uh, the main steps are obtaining access, preclosure, and then insertion of the sheath and valve uh, system, and then system uh, removal and closure after finishing the TAVR procedure. And finally, bailout technique should be ready and all equipments available if needed. I'm going to over a couple of, uh, go over a couple of cases. Uh, case one is an 84-year-old female who was diagnosed with severe symptomatic aortic stenosis. Uh, she has acute and chronic diastolic congestive heart failure, persistent AFib uh, on anticoagulation, severe vascular disease, including thoracic abdominal aneurysm, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm, uh, renal artery stenosis with a history of stenting, mesenteric artery stenosis with um, a history of uh, SMA bypass and history of carotid artery endarterectomy, bilateral iliac stenting. So as you can see, this patient is a very vascular path and had a lot of vascular uh, diseases that made her prohibitive uh, for transfemoral TAVR. She was also high risk for SAVR. So uh, we exercised the option of doing her uh, TAVR through the axillary axis. This is her uh, CAT scan pictures. As you can see, there's diffuse disease on the uh, lower extremities. There is a, a abdominal aneurysm. There's tertiary with heavy calcification. And all the measurements were uh, showing that there is a, a almost very, very tiny femoral and uh, um, uh, almost impossible to do this case femorally, even, even with cut down due to extensive iliac disease. Um, so we uh, went ahead and uh, looked for um, CT scan of the uh, uh, axillary artery, and uh, we obtained uh, 3D um, reconstruction uh, with three mensu. And we found axillary artery is very uh, suitable for um, transaxillary TAVR. As you can see, axillary artery looks healthy. There is no osteal stenosis, and um, the diameter of the artery is suitable for her uh, TAVR. On the TAVR day, this is the uh, uh, our planning. We almost always need a femoral axis six French uh, catheter uh, with a JR4 um, um, catheter in the subclavian artery to obtain subclavian angiogram to make sure that the angiogram match the CAT scan, and then we obtain uh, vascular axis using ultrasound, fluoroscopy, and uh, micropuncture technique. As you can see here, the uh, uh, micropuncture wire going smooth after obtaining access uh, for the axillary artery while uh, accessing the artery away from the chest. Next step would be um, placing six French sheath, take an angiogram, make sure we have, uh, we have a, a good access, and um, also make sure we're not puncturing the vein as well. Number two, we always uh, obtain a, uh, uh, a view where we can advance the double proclose technique to uh, secure the, uh, the uh, uh, axillary axis. Uh, next, we advance a, uh, we cross the valve with a, in, a, in the same fashion with AL1 and put a Lundy coarse wire in the, uh, in the ventricle and the usual fashion as we do femoral approach, uh, same thing. And, and then we advance the dilator over the uh, stiff wire to obtain a track and uh, obtain a good rail to advance the valve. Next step would be advancing the uh, valve system. In this case, we did a, a, a TAVR with uh, Evolute Pro Plus uh, valve, size 29, based on the CAT scan. And then we uh, do the same steps. We have a big tail coming from the, uh, from the uh, femoral artery, uh, six French, and uh, we do cusp overlap technique. And now valve is deployed up to 80%. We had good depth here, no conduction issues. 
And uh, next we uh, pull our wire back and the nose cone in order to uh, obtain release with forward pressure from the primary operator as in usual fashion. And now the valve is released. We had obtained good results and we confirmed this with TEE and uh, with hemodynamics. And the last step would be take care of the axis. So we go back with the GR4 catheter and obtain a uh, femoral angiogram after we uh, deploy the preclose in usual fashion to maintain, uh, to achieve hemostasis. Uh, by doing this, we also are ready to bail out if needed. We have a cover stent sized to the axillary artery based on the CAT scan ready uh, in case we need to deploy it uh, from femoral axis. This patient did very well and came back for one year follow up um, uh, in the clinic. Case two is a very interesting case. Uh, this is a 66 year old male who has history of symptomatic severe aortic stenosis, underwent prior TAVR. Uh, with self-expandable valve three years ago uh, via right femoral axis. And it, it was noticed at the time his TAVR was very challenging because of severe vascular disease. He has other comorbidities, including COPD, coronary artery disease with uh, prior stenting to his RCA, hypertension, diabetes, uh, severe PAD, uh, porcelain aorta, acute and chronic diastolic congestive heart failure. Evaluation showed that his TAVR valve has failed and showed severe uh, uh, regurgitation. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the previous uh, previous uh, implant, uh, we we did uh, we did a search on his uh, previous procedure. He underwent twenty nine uh, core valve uh, evolute at the time, uh, evaluated by our structural heart team and deemed to be um, very prohibitive risk for surgery. And uh, also, his femoral axis was not feasible to uh, to do a tav and tav, so we decided to go uh, with axillary axis in this case. We obtained a CAT scan for his, uh, for his uh, valve, and uh, his measurement showed that he will need a 26 millimeter uh, Sabian. We decided to do a Sabian here, uh, tab and tab uh, inside at 99 evolute uh, core valve. We, we realized from his uh, CT scan that his valve was deployed deep, initial valve was deployed deep. So we uh, tried to deploy the Sabian in a higher position to obtain good seal and treat his, uh, his uh, uh, severe regurgitation. On his TAVR day, uh, we got access the same way, micropuncture technique. We have a safety wire from the femoral artery with the JR4 catheter inside, uh, inside the axillary artery. And um, under this wire, you can ac actually visualize where you, where you stick. Uh, we also did ultrasound and fluoroscopy and micropuncture here, and uh, we obtained access. Next step, we uh, exchange for six French sheath, deploy double per close, and then upsize the sheath with a, uh, with a uh, uh, 14 French dilator over uh, lander crossed wire inside the LV. Next step would be uh, uh, deployment of a um, Sabian uh, 14 French um, um, E sheath over the dilator and uh, advance it slowly in the subclavian artery, as you can see here. Dilator was removed over the wire. And next step, we, uh, we advance the uh, 26 millimeter S3 valve, as you can see here. Next, we added the big tail uh, to visualize where is the lowest uh, point of the uh, uh, aortic cusp. We had no difficulty advancing the, uh, the uh, Sabian inside the uh, old evolute. And now with positioning, and now under rabbit basing to 180, we deployed the valve. We tried to deploy it as high as we could to maintain good seal and treat the, the uh, severe regurgitation. Valve was deployed and the system was retracted. This is how it looks, uh, tab and tab. And uh, then we obtain an angiogram of the uh, femoral, uh, of the axillary artery to uh, make sure we have good hemostasis. We're able to achieve this in this case without need for any uh, stenting or ballooning. This is the picture of the final TE 
as you can see, you can see the uh, leaflets inside this three with, with full expansion. And you can see also on the long axis. Patient was transferred to the uh, telemetry floor and was discharged home next day. So alternative access is very challenging. And uh, why? The reason is that severe PAD is a predictive of overall sicker and older population. Uh, sometimes it takes longer length of stay, although this is now became a standard of care that we send those patients uh, home next day uh, as we do in femoral cases. Somewhat increased morbidity and mortality. Uh, center experience is very important. Also operator experience and expertise might be limited in certain alternative access options. Radiation protection generally is not as safe as in femoral access because the, uh, as you can see, you operate on a, on a field close to the heart and uh, 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 radiation exposure can be higher than femoral, femoral artery. These cases were uh, illustrates that the ability to perform TAVR using auxiliary uh, approach, despite the presence of challenging peripheral vascular anatomy and almost prohibitive risk for femoral access, uh, all performed with completely uh, percutaneous approach with no surgical cut down, demonstrating that the feasibility and safety of this method uh, therefore, avoiding any surgical cut down and risk entailed with surgical cut down to the axillary area. Across all TAVR trials and registries, it was evident that transfemoral access is, is consistently the, 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 the lower mortality. Uh, percutaneous uh, transaxillary TAVR uh, is, uh, as you know, it's fully percutaneous alternative access closest to transfemoral in terms of equipment use access and closure and post-operative care, the only major difference is that you have to adjust your, your table and your, uh, your uh, sitting in the, in the uh, cath lab when you do those cases compared to femoral. It avoids retroperitoneal space and avoid also uh, intrathoracic space, so you're out of the chest. Uh, axillary um, uh, axis, most of the time free of disease. Axillary artery is almost uh, free of disease. It's healthy artery compared to femoral and iliac. And this can be confirmed with, uh, with CAT scan and, and also uh, axillary angiography during the case. Slightly higher risk of stroke compared to femoral approach. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to present this, uh, these two cases. Thank you.